Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing a rather interesting series of comments from Epic Games, and this is all concerning Lumin in the land of Nanite. If you're unfamiliar with this demo, it is for the upcoming Unreal Engine 5, which is not going to launch until next year. And it was running on PlayStation 5 development hardware. To my understanding, the development hardware isn't as advanced as what is currently available. But even so, the demo itself was, well, I'm just going to say pretty damn astounding. Um... Lumen and Nanite are actually two technologies inside the demo, with Lumen being kind of a global uh, illumination which is capable of uh, running in real time, and then we have Nanite which is capable of just pulling in vast quantities of data, and is really going to change the way games are kind of designed by uh, developers, because not only do developers get access to huge swathes of data, but they also don't need to worry about modeling various levels of detail for, let's say, in-game uh, characters and other assets. Instead, the engine can just kind of do this on the fly. I've gone into this much more extensively and in much greater technical detail in a uh, video, so you can check that out if you'd like. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. Plug, 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 plug. But there are some rather interesting comments from Nick Penwarden, and he is Epic's VP of Engineering. This was uh, during an interview with uh, VG247. I'll, of course, link the interview also in the description of the video. Let's talk about his comments. The PlayStation 5 provides a huge leap in both computing and graphics performance, but its storage architecture is also truly special. The ability to streaming content at extreme speeds enables developers to create denser and more detailed environments, changing how we think about streaming content. It's so impactful that we've rewritten our core I.O. subsystems for Unreal Engine with the PlayStation 5 in mind. End quote. I would like to stress that Unreal Engine 5 is still not finished. Once again, I will stress it's not launching until next year, and this demo was crafted with kind of an early build of the software. And naturally, UE5 will run on a plethora of different hardware. Uh, we've even heard Tim Sweeney himself confirm that it will run, of course, on the PC. It will even work on the Switch. Naturally, it will work on the next generation Xbox, uh, the PlayStation 5, of course, and even older hardware such as the PlayStation 4 or what have you can all run this. Furthermore, developers have said that uh, the RTX 2070 card, I can't remember if it's 2070 or 2070 Super, could do a pretty decent job of approximating the performance in the UE5 demo. And there is a bit of confusion because the demo itself was running at 1440p, but uh, was at 30fps, or at least a locked 30fps, which isn't actually the real performance of it. Apparently unlocked, it was really hitting around 40-ish fps, but uh, just because they wanted to v-sync it, they uh, once again locked it to 30fps. Which is certainly not a screaming high frame rate of, say, you know, 120 FPS. But once again, given the fact that it's still quite early software and given just what we're seeing here, to me anyway, it's extremely impressive. But the reason I bring this up uh, is, a, well, a couple of reasons. One, multiple people have already emailed me about this and also uh, provided me a couple of DMs on Twitter. So thanks to everyone who has reached out for this. Um, and so I figured I'd cover it. And the second is that I'm actually working on a video for the next generation consoles anyway. And it's rather fascinating because some of what uh, Epic are saying here actually really closely matches up with what a couple of developers have told me behind the scenes. And this actually happened prior to this particular article. In fact, I've actually DM'd a couple of people on Twitter about this. I was telling Optimus Code on Twitter about a couple of these things, although I've kept quite a lot of stuff to myself. 
Um, and basically, one of the things the developers have told me is that the demo was crafted with PlayStation 5 hardware in mind. And if it had been ported directly, essentially, to the Xbox, the Xbox could not run the demo too good because basically the storage system of the Xbox is different. But before anyone starts using that as a PS5 equal better than Xbox, that's not the end of the story. Um, multiple times I've said that the Xbox and PlayStation hardware are not necessarily worse than one another. The PlayStation 5 has more I.O., the Xbox has more T-flops, the PlayStation 5 focuses on throughput, and so on and so on. Um, I've once again gone into this rather extensively in another video. I'll try to remember to link in the video description. But long and short of it is the Lumen Demo was constructed around the PlayStation 5 hardware. And so if the demo had instead been developed around the Xbox hardware, it wouldn't really look worse, it would just look different. And this is not to say that, for example, Nanite could not run on the Xbox. It could, uh, and of course Lumen could run on it as well. But we would perhaps see an instance where there are fewer assets being pulled in, but instead there are more compute-based effects. Remember, things such as hardware-based ray tracing are running on the GPU. While the um, next generation consoles do have dedicated ray tracing components within them, they are RT cores which are designed to do BVH, bounding volume hierarchy calculations. This is basically where rays are thrown into the scene and then they can use that to figure out what is actually happening with a scene in terms of bounces of light and as it's reflecting from one thing to another thing to another thing. Basically, rays of light, obviously in the real world, will be impacted by different surfaces they're reflecting upon. So, for example, if you have a red car in front of a, let's say, a window, you will be able to see a reflection of that red car of naturally in the uh, window itself. But you will probably also be able to see parts of what's behind the window in the red car. Uh, and obviously, bounces of light just continue to mix around and create different shades. And it's it's a very computationally expensive thing to do. And that's why uh, it's been so difficult to run it. And uh, with the Xbox, it is able to generate more uh, rays of light in a scene. The difference is, though, that those rays can bounce to fewer surfaces, but this is because the clock frequency of the GPU is lower. So basically, um, while a ray is in flight, more uh, RT cores cannot help the calculation of what the ray is doing. Now, I'm working actually on a console-specific video, which will be up kind of soon. And I'm actually glad that this popped up early because it actually reinforces some of the information that I've been fed in the, um, well, in the series of developers that have contacted me. As a couple of people uh, actually reached out for the Xbox as well, so I have some stuff for the Xbox, which is kind of interesting, but I also have a crap ton of information on the uh, PlayStation 5 architecture. As uh, people know who have been following the channel for some time, I've actually leaked a whole bunch of information for the PS5 in the past. So I will naturally continue to uh, push that and obviously do further console analysis. Um, so do check that out on the channel. Also, while we're on the subject of Unreal Engine, it's worth noting that there's an interview floating around with GameSpot, and this is from Kim Libri. Hopefully I've pronounced that name correctly. Uh, and they are the Epic Games uh, Chief Technical Officer. And they've basically been uh, pointing out that uh, there will be a... a continuum, that's the word they used, between games and movies, and potentially even there will be almost a um, a new genre of uh, something created, a new entertainment medium. Um, and this is because when it comes to how games have been uh, developed in the past, things are very different. Once again, I'll go back to the fact that because of Unreal Engine 5, you no longer need to manually author lower LODs or LODs and bake in normal maps to essentially um, 
make up for the fact that rendering high uh, quality models is so expensive. Basically, the engine will automatically adjust the quality of a model. So you could have something like ZBrush create a really impressive quality model with like millions of triangles. And then depending on a multitude of different factors, what's going on in the scene, the model itself will obviously reduce or increase in quality. So what I mean by that is obviously the further you are away from an object, you kind of get to this point where if you're really far away, you don't like want a thousand triangles to somehow merge together, coalesce to form one on-screen pixel. And just like in real life, the further away you are from an object, the less detail you can see. I'm going to read out a portion of the quote. I think there will be a continuum between the two worlds, and I think that artists will cross over. I think we'll see when it comes to a content creators making CG assets, whether it's making a car or a chair or whatever, they'll be similar for both industries. We'll see massive cross-pollination between those two worlds. That's a term you don't get to use very often, isn't it? It always seems so, I don't know, naughty. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Does that mean that games and movies will be better? Yeah, but... I think we'll see new types of entertainment. Look how we're blurring the lines with Fortnite. I'm going to give you all a second to visibly shudder. We have concerts uh, happening where, uh, concerts, excuse me, happening where millions of people take place. And I think entertainment is going to go this awesome mutation over the next five years that really blurs the lines. They went, they then go on to mention about Batman. Uh, imagine if there's a new Batman game for the next generation consoles. Uh, we think it's going to look amazing, but it's also going to look like a high-end animated movie with badass video gaming action. Wouldn't it be great for fans to go deeper and see animated stories in the world that use the same assets and characters? And wouldn't it be great if they were rendered live on your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox and shareable and modifiable and the sky's the limit? I think, well, there's a pretty, pretty good chance, this is obviously out of quote, that uh, Machinima fans and uh, animators are probably drooling about now as what is essentially being hinted here is you could take a game world and then just basically just go ham and because the models would have already been created in such great detail with such incredible animation you could potentially do some really interesting stuff with this and um, I think the next generation is going to be I think it's going to be pretty damn amazing I'm extremely extremely hyped for what's happening. I'm primarily a PC gamer, as uh, regular viewers know. And um, I think that this is going to definitely push uh, the adoption of certain tech like SSDs and more RAM onto PCs, which is obviously a good thing. So I'm extremely excited about this. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what games... Uh, look like on both consoles because really and truly as you are probably aware if a game is being created by you know a triple a developer that's being released on both systems most of the time it's not really fully taking advantage of the tech whereas um you know when you see a game by naughty dog or whomever obviously that is being is designed specifically around the hardware it's targeted upon and I think there's going to be some really cool stuff coming in the future. And I'm super stoked as well to see what uh, we learn from the August event with Microsoft with the Hot Chips conference, where hopefully they'll start drilling down further into the APU of the system. As, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really... Uh, I think it's going to be fascinating. With all of that said... I'd also like to remind you that uh, there are lots of pieces of tech for both consoles I am not discussing in this video simply for brevity's sake. Like, for example, with the Xbox, it can do things like uh, upsample low resolution textures as well. And I, I know I'm kind of going back on myself a little bit here, but this is one of the reasons I did mention a moment ago that when it comes to really pushing hardware, when you have a demo which is created specifically around a console, it doesn't really mean it's representative of all that the other console can't do. It just is developed a little bit different. So I think uh, when both consoles are fully leveraged, which is going to take a couple of years, the results are going to be pretty damn mind-boggling. But with all of that said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. The normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves.
Bye for now.